for a few minutes say father one more time say father i receive grace to hear and to understand go ahead and begin to pray i receive grace to hear grace to understand grace to hear and grace to understand someone is praying you're gaining momentum by the spirit grace to hear grace to understand grace to hear grace to understand in all you're getting it says get understanding I receive grace to hear I receive grace to understand in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus mighty name we pray father speak to our hearts tonight we're here because we believe in you we're here because we know that you are here for us we have come to receive we have come to ascend in the spirit and I pray oh God that the entrance of your word indeed will give light and understanding unto our hearts be glorified in and through our lives tonight amen and amen give Jesus a big hand clap one more time and then please be seated hallelujah I like to teach the Word of God because when we understand the nature and the ways of God then we're able to manifest the reality of the victory that has come to us by reason of this Zoe life that we have received it is not enough to know that we have received the life of God it is important for us to know what it takes to release the potential that is locked up within that life hallelujah and the Zoe life that we have been given is knowledge dependent you experience the riches that are embedded in that life on account of knowledge so conferences like these are platforms by the spirit of god to help us ascend to see clearer to know better to be repositioned for an excelling year god works with men in times and seasons and god is not doing the same thing all the time are we together it is important we understand what he's doing in the now and then to be instructed to know how to navigate our path to victory. The Bible says, now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph. The believer should not live a defeated life. We are being called into a life of victory. But it takes an understanding of how the kingdom is structured to experience that victory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want to share a few thoughts with us tonight and um, I just it was strong in my spirit the first will come as a charge and as an encouragement and then the second part of it will come as a prophetic instruction and I'm praying in the name of Jesus that our hearts will be open to receive Philippians chapter 3 please we're reading from verse 13 to 15 Philippians chapter 3 Paul is speaking now and he says brethren I count not myself to have apprehended, he says, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things, pay attention now, which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. Next verse, please. It says, I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Final verse. It says, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, the word perfect there means mature, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So the Bible says, brethren, he starts back to verse 13, please. I count not myself to have apprehended, to have attained. Now you need to understand who is speaking here. We're talking about Paul, Paul the Great paul the exceptional apostle at this point in his life theologically speaking he had attained some height in ministry 
excelling and yet the man says i count not myself to have apprehended then he says but this one thing i do so i want us to borrow something from his understanding tonight he says one thing but he gives it two expressions the first dimension of the one thing that he does is forgetting those things which are behind forgetting the things which are behind forgetting the things which are behind notice he never said forgetting the evil things he never said forgetting the bad things whatever the things are provided they are behind he says forgetting them are we learning already in fact i like the way isaiah 43 from verse 18 to 19 says he says remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old very potent instruction remember ye not the former things now overdwelling please listen ladies and gentlemen overdwelling in the past both negative and positive past has an effect on anyone there is something about the way god designed the human spirit such that the moment you begin to overdwell in the past whether positive past or negative past it sustains an ability to peg you and stop you from going forward is someone learning now so paul is speaking here and says brethren i count myself regardless whatever results you see i count myself to not have apprehended but there is this one thing i do number one I forget the things which are behind provided they are behind I forget them to forget does not mean to lose memory of to forget means to not overdwell there to not give it power over your current condition is someone learning now now listen very carefully overdwelling I wrote here in the past both negative and positive can hinder advancement and progress in life. There are many people today who failed, they are failing now simply because they succeeded yesterday. The success of yesterday has refused to allow them make progress today. And there are those who are failing now because they failed yesterday. And they have camped around the failure of yesterday and they are wasting today discussing yesterday. Are we learning now? Now, write this down, please. Overdwelling on a negative past creates fear and discouragement. Overdwelling on a negative past creates fear and discouragement. Every time you begin to overdwell on yesterday, especially a negative yesterday, the effect that it has on you is that it can bring fear fear of today fear of tomorrow and discouragement it deflates your passion to be daring it deflates your passion to press hallelujah the bible tells us of a man called gideon gideon was a man who had been destined to be a warrior a valiant man but the bible tells us he was hiding and when the angel came to him he said, oh, thou mighty man of valor. And the man was hiding. He said, don't insult me. Don't call me that name. If it is true, look what has happened to us. I am the least person, he says. The least person and my father's tribe is also the least. God did not ask him that information. It is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. There are many people today who cannot make progress. You are destined to be doing great things in the lives and the destinies of people in ministry, in business. But yesterday has such, listen, yesterday is so jealous. It will never allow you to leave it and get into tomorrow, not without a fight. Yesterday always wants to relieve itself in your today. You must sustain the power to break away from yesterday. Are we together? Just because you were Saul yesterday does not mean you must remain Saul forever. Saul can become Paul. Cephas can become Simon. Abraham can become Abraham. Are we together now? This is very important. Paul is saying the reason behind my consistent advancement is that there is one thing that I will not fail to do. 
I forget the things that are before me. Isn't it amazing that Paul, while he's in prison, you would think he should be regretting the prison. He's busy writing a letter and warning the churches and saying, I'm coming. I hear that some of you are now misbehaving. Just to let you receive this letter first and wait for me. As soon as I come out, if you come out of a prison, will you run away or continue what you are doing? This was a man that the past did not have power over him. You are in prison and you're already informing the people. Tell this guy I heard that he's teaching something else. When I come out, I will meet with you shortly. This is a prisoner telling people. And as soon as he comes out, you will think he will write a letter and say, do you know what I went through? Mm -mm. Are we together? My first assignment while encouraging you tonight is to destroy these excuses that have always made every new year look like the old one. Say no way. Shout it again. Say no way. No excuses for failure in ministry. No excuses for failure in your life. You are not the first person to be wounded. I regret, with, um, I sympathize with what happened yesterday. But we are tired of hearing yesterday's story. There are people today who will remain failures forever. And they will start telling you stories that happened 10 years ago. Do you know I bought a house and rain destroyed it? Okay, sorry. But yesterday is too far. 10 years ago. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. So dwelling in a negative past. And you see, Satan understands the power of the mind. He will manipulate your thinking into believing you cannot become because of what you were yesterday. So when God is saying, I want to make a mighty prophet out of you, Satan will use your mind to mock you and say, you, is it that God lacked men? What is God going to do with a vessel like you? Is someone learning already? There are many people seated, some of you watching me now. If you had been able to sustain the power to conquer yesterday, you would have been blessing the nations now. In business, in life, you've been in Lagos, but you've been in your yesterday, always complaining. Why is your January like this? You know, I told you that this, my destiny helper just died last year. Okay, I understand. And I'm not being sarcastic. It's all right. He's been buried. Jesus is still alive. Are we together? Oh, I was raped when I was a child. I sympathize with you. I don't throw away your pain. But you have to get past that realm. Are we together? Someone told me yes, and he said no again. All right, that's all. I mean, get out of those things. Shake yesterday and say goodbye. Goodbye once and for all. Once and for all, in the name of Jesus. Goodbye to the tears. Goodbye to the shame. Goodbye to the mockery. Perhaps before you got born again, you lived a wayward life. Now you are saved. There is a big difference between being an unbeliever and a believer. It's a spiritual reality. Whether your mind has agreed with it or not, the Bible says if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. It's the assignment of the world to bring your mind into the experience that has been furnished in your spirit. This one thing I do. Is someone learning now? Dwelling on a negative past can destroy you. And I'm here by the Spirit of God to tell someone God still is looking, God is still looking for you. He still wants you. That preacher is still in you. That businessman is still in you. That prophet is still in you. Forget about the naysayers. They didn't create you. They will not be there when you make it. Are we together now? Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. I failed yesterday. I applied for a job and no one gave me a job. Can I tell you, today is the gift that God gives men to correct yesterday's tragedy. Every time you wake up and you see that it's a new day, that new day is a message from God. There is still hope for a tree. Is someone learning now? Now, over dwelling on a positive past, I need to balance it. Over dwelling on yesterday's success, yesterday's results, ministerially, in business, in career, and so on and so forth, it brings pride, it brings overconfidence, and it brings indiscipline. Listen carefully. 
you can so succeed that you stop obeying the principles that brought you there because you will believe that you are too great to fail this is the mistake of great people so you have a lot of balloon success people are up today and down tomorrow over dwelling on a positive past creates pride over confidence and indiscipline pride over confidence and indiscipline is someone learning now so paul says this one thing i do whether they are scars or crowns provided they are in my yesterday i make sure they do not have an effect on me because there is something before me you can never focus on the future until you do something with what is past thank god for 2023 thank god for the house you built thank god for the business stride. thank god for the ministerial exploits thank god you had a child thank god you got married thank god you relocated but 2023 is gone rejoice over what god did but do not overdwell there that house can be in your mind and stop the estate from coming are we together yes many of us listen this is a revelation that god gave me many years ago and i submit to you it's a principle that still governs my life no matter how great god does whatever he does through my life once i am done with that meeting and that program i kneel down and say father to you be the glory that's the end of it how was the conference great glory be to god what is the next agenda in front do you believe what i'm teaching you yes there are some of you the moment you step in in the midst of people you are always telling them stories of yesteryears. As you look at me like this, don't, don't worry, oh, there are many things. There's a story I will tell you. In 1997, do you know this one happened? I saved 500 people in one meeting. 1997, what is today's date? You must refuse to allow your crowns be so heavy on your head that they stop you from flying. No, don't, don't refuse to allow it. That you gather a lot of accolades that you cannot move forward. No, let me tell you the truth. It is a dangerous thing to once be great and then you are still alive. That in your lifetime, you watch the glory of God rise and fade back in your life. That people look at you and say, this man was once anointed once great once powerful once influential in the name of jesus the son of the living god let me speak over someone here whatever will make that word ichabod happen in your life that they will say you once were great once were anointed once were prayerful once were disciplined i curse it right now i curse it right now in the name of jesus for the bible says the path of the just is that in your bible it says it's as a shining light that shineth more and more more and more is the preordination for every believer it is in our destiny to experience more and more hallelujah reminds me of the story of eli and his sons consistent compromise brought them to a point where the Bible says they went to battle with the ark of God and now the ark had been captured and then his son Hophni and Phinehas they were killed and when they returned they came and told the old Eli they said listen three things have happened that are dangerous number one the nation of Israel has been defeated in battle number two your sons Hophni and Phinehas have all been killed but number three the ark of God, the symbol of your priesthood has been taken away. The Bible says the moment they said that, Eli fell backward, he hit his head and died. And the wife, the daughter-in-law, when she heard that, she got into labor immediately. And when she gave birth, she named the child Ichabod. It says the glory has departed from Israel. They said you will leave. She said no, she gave birth and she also died. Everything that will make your life a warning to others, 
that people will use your life to warn themselves, warn their children, warn other pastors. Here at this Gaining Momentum Conference, may it die from your life forever. Shout a louder amen. May it die forever. There are people who were prayerful until they became anointed. Now, whether you pray or not, because when you teach things work, ah, the deception of great people. See, there are three temptations that Satan brought before Jesus. That's not my discussion tonight, but it's important that I address this. There are three temptations that Satan brought before Jesus. And every one of us will go through these three levels. The first temptation is turn stone to bread. Compromise of the use of power. Use it for your personal gain. Power has been given unto you, but you can turn that stone to become bread and use it to satisfy your hunger. Why will you be hungry and have the power to make bread? Because his life was governed by the will of God, not his desire. It is as the father wants, not as his belly wants. And Jesus said, no, the economy of the kingdom is built such that the true believer's life revolves around the will of God, not his desire. Are we together? Turn this stone to bread. I can manipulate ministry and use it for my own gain. But he says, no, the life of a believer, one who has been cultured by God, is thy will be done. Temptation number one. The second temptation that all great people go through is the temptation of carelessness at the point of spirituality. That was the second temptation. He took Jesus to a holy, the mountain of, I mean, on top of the temple. And here's what he told him, fall down. You cannot fall down when you're on the ground. You can only fall down when you're at the top. He says, fall down intentionally. After all, there is an immunity that comes with you. It is written, he shall keep his angels charge over you. They shall bear you up on their wings lest you dash your feet against a stone. Who is quoting that scripture? Satan. And Jesus rebuked him. Every time you rise to the top, that is always a temptation. Fall down. There will be angels holding you. And the third temptation had to do with influence and power. He took him into an exceeding high mountain. The Bible says he showed him the kingdoms and the glories of the world. He says, all this has been given to me. You just bow down. If this is the key you want to collect. Bow down. Why go through Calvary? Why go through the cross? You just bow to me. I don't need it. What I need is the loyalty and allegiance. You bow down. Since you are the express image of the invisible God. That would be God bowing to me. So you bow down and I can give you the key. Is someone learning now? This is very important. Every time you begin to make it, you need more prayers than those who are not making it. Did you hear what I said? The one who is succeeding needs more prayer than the ones who are failing. Hallelujah. And one of the ways that great people stay focused is that they do not overdwell on crowns and trophies. Once you give Jesus praise, enjoy the success, and tap yourself at the back, that is enough. And the next thing you keep moving. Is someone learning now? So congratulations for the many things that happened in 2023. I salute you for taking advantage of the word that has come from your pastor. I salute you for your diligence in hearing and listening. Now the word produced for you. But make sure you do not dwell. God still has great things for you this year. But you must be able to forget the things that are behind. Paul says, brethren, now you understand the scripture. I count myself to not have apprehended, but this one thing I do, he says, I forget the things which are behind. What are the things? I forget the miracles that I performed yesterday. I forget the prisons and the whips that I collected. I, I forget whatever it is. My encounters with Jesus, I preserve the experience for my growth. But I stop overdwelling there. Someone prophesy to yourself, say it's time to go forward. Say it again, it's time to go forward. 
that means you will stop overdwelling on the success of yesterday and the failure of yesterday. Both success and failure can achieve the same thing in your life. They can destroy. If Satan tries to use failure to destroy you and it does not work, he will use results. The most important thing is that you are destroyed. Are we together? Too much salt can kill. Too much sugar can kill. Any one of them. As far as Satan is concerned is that you eventually die from one. You get the example I'm trying to bring. When he uses failure and you refuse to be discouraged, he will allow you progress. Then he will meet you at the gate of the great and come with another kind of temptation and say, why pray again? You are a great man of God already. Why give again? You are already a millionaire. You are not struggling. If you didn't have money, I can understand why you are giving and sowing, but now you've made it. Will a demon come and will remove your money from your account? Satan for you. And you see, the things you will not believe now, by the time you make it to certain degrees, you will believe it. Are we together? I count myself to not have apprehended I forget the things which are behind. Then he now says, I reach forth to those things which are before. Someone say before. before. Prophesy to yourself, say before. before. That means there is always something before you. Whether or not you can see it, there is always something before you. A greater today, a greater tomorrow. In God's economy, 2024 should be by far by far greater than 2023 can i prophesy over someone in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by december this year you will stand shedding tears of joy because of the mighty things that god would have done in your life hey for someone though your beginning be small let me speak to you there is a grace that lifts men right from where they are to the place of grace and glory i speak that to your life I speak that to your finances. I speak that to your ministry. I speak that to your health. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. God can make men great. Oh. I hope you believe that. It is within his power to make men great. So an ordinary man, supposedly nobody, who is seated here, whether inside or outside, no one may know you now but that by december all men are looking for you i'm not entertaining you oh i say to whoever has the grace to believe in the name of jesus may my god place something on your head this night may my god place an unction upon your head this night it will compel nations to call for you it will compel territories to seek you in the name of jesus christ In Mark chapter 1 and verse 37, the Bible says Jesus departed to a solitary place to pray after the exploits of his crusades. Mark 1, 37, the Bible says, and they began to look for him. And when they found him, they said unto him, all men seek for thee. There are graces when you carry some men will seek for you. There are graces when you carry your tribes men will seek for you. There are graces when you carry poor men will seek for you. There are graces when you carry troublemakers will seek for you. But there are graces when you carry all men. All men means kings. All men mean nobles. All men include strangers that do not know you. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? Everything that is a covering cast over you that will not allow the glory of God to be revealed in the name of Jesus I came by the anointing of the Spirit I tear it like a veil I tear it like a veil over your help them please I tear it like a veil I tear it like a veil in the name of Jesus I say it to you again every covering cast of darkness over your life that will not let the glory of God be revealed I came by fire and I came with power 
this night let it be torn in the name of Jesus remember you know the former things everything that stopped you from rising last year and made the year look as if you were cursed I don't know what it is called but in the name of Jesus everything that is not of the Christ you have watched it hold people down and will not let them go forward I stand like Moses and I declare this year go forward I push you by prophecy go forward go forward advance help that gentleman go forward excel excel in ministry I place an anointing upon you excel in business excel in family excel in the name of Jesus where you have been deserted so that no man will pass through you I call you an eternal excellency hear me in the name of Jesus the anointing for speed I place that anointing on you now take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now I release that grace speed in ministry speed in business speed in destiny speed in career may my God take 10 years and put it in one year 10 years and put it in one year I'm hearing in my spirit shame I don't know who that is for shame everything that has looked like shame is like a mark on your head everywhere you go it attracts shame I don't know who this word is for but in the name of Jesus that cause of shame be broken now be broken now be broken now be broken now shame and reproach in ministry be broken now shame and reproach in business career failure be broken now I want you to pray a prayer and then we'll continue say in the name of Jesus I obtain grace to advance grace to go forward open your mouth and begin to pray grace grace to advance you are gaining momentum in the spirit don't be silent pray grace to advance this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching for the things that are before me for in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray please be seated for a minute give us Philippians chapter 3 again I want you to look at verse 14 very carefully verse 14 the power of God is mighty in this place you came to church tonight how will you go back the same no no for God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent I'm hearing a prophetic word for someone is one word again 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 is a prophetic word this is not the first time I'm hearing it in a meeting is the word again I am coming to you again 
you are rising again uh, what you once held that left you by carelessness again god is bringing it again it's not for everyone but i'm saying it to someone you lost opportunities relationships resources my god is bringing it again restoring again lifting you again giving you visibility again please be seated I'm seeing fire fall. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing fire fall. Oh, let it fall, let it fall. Let it give you wings in the spirit. Wings to fly, wings to soar, wings to fly, wings to soar. In the name of Jesus. who comes in the name of our God holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our God holy holy blessed is he Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Blessed is he who comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Let's tidy this up. The time we have. But I want you to be sensitive. Something is happening to your spirit man. Listen. You see, you must learn to discern spiritual atmospheres. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. There are two ladies I'm seeing in the choir right now. I just saw fire just coming on them. Two of you. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what that impartation is for. But may that grace cause you to ascend in the spirit. Ascend in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. hallelujah i know we're discussing along the lines of the team but the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing a man of god and the lord is saying his gift to you tonight is the spirit of revelation you have been praying you have been crying this is a minister of the gospel wherever that man is whether inside or outside in the name of jesus i call upon the god that gives men the one who can open the eyes of men to see in the name of Jesus like the dew of Hammon may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now am I wasting your time I just sense that God is beginning to I was to teach something now but I just sense there is a stirring. Someone's fasting has touched the heart of God. Someone's praying has touched the heart of God. Take it high for me, please. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me rest on me let your power holy ghost power rest on me rest on me oh, oh, oh rest on me 
Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Holy Ghost power, rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper, rest on me. Rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit for signs and wonders rest on me. Rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Someone begin to pray. Rest on me. Abalika to Sarabalata. Rest on me, O God. The power to prosper. Rest on me. The spirit of wisdom. Rest on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're having a little chat with Pastor, and I was just commending on the grace that God has brought and multiplied upon his life, the ministry spreading across. I want to release a grace for visibility. If you like, believe it. If you like, don't believe it. But there is a grace that gives men visibility hear me just because you are graced and gifted does not mean the nations will hear you there are many gifted people who have been kept down the Bible says Gideon sounded a trumpet and 33,000 people showed up where they came from we do not know but there was a trumpet that they had and they began to gravitate towards him there is a grace that when it rests upon you you cannot be small no it's true because many of you here i sense in my spirit you are faithful you are diligent but that grace that becomes a leverage is not there i pray for someone here in the name that is above all names the grace that gives men visibility that will cause your voice that will cause your product that hear ye him anointing may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now in the name of Jesus please be seated please be seated Now what I'm about to give you are prophetic instructions. I want you to just listen to them. Instructions are enhancers to destiny manifestation. He says, my son, pay attention to my words. He says, incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of thee. They are life, not to everyone, to those who find them and health to their flesh hallelujah those who train pilots are not called coaches they are called instructors because they give them direct precepts if you keep with it you will soar in the air you compromise you may crash in a moment hallelujah and the lord gave me this just to encourage you on this over dwelling on the past and then the next is a rundown of a few prophetic instructions let me just walk with the time that i have and then I finally speak over your life. Honestly, this is the year your life will really produce results. You see, when you hear words like this, 
don't get used to entertainment on TV and just believe everybody who is speaking is entertaining. No. Gabriel looked at Zechariah and said, I am Gabriel that came from the presence of God. Find out where men are coming from before you vet what they are saying. No. Not everybody is a joker. I say it again. In the name of Jesus, the one who called an anointed man, the one who has so given us graces this year, 2024, may my God surprise you. May my God surprise you. May my God surprise you. You believe what you are hearing? Let's get a few prophetic instructions and then we'll pray. Thank you, Jesus. Just hold for me now the person who shouts loud under the anointing. You don't have to bring them out. You just hold them so that they don't run around. Oh, oh, oh. rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Spirit of wisdom. Rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me. Rest on me. Let your power, power to prosper. Rest on me. Rest on me. Let your power for signs and wonders. Rest on me. Rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh. There is a young man here. Please just allow me to do my thing. The Spirit of God keeps prevailing over me. There is a young man here. You have not started ministry yet, but this year. There is an anointing that has been searching for you. You have been quiet walking in the spirit. You are in this place. The Lord is asking me to speak that grace over your life. Father, in the name of Jesus for that young man, silent in the cave of Adulam, being walked upon by the spirit, let this anointing that will begin to announce you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, Paris Kani Shalaka Pariata. Ebrakate bareke skatina skabai, karia shabareke pariata, elekate freska beneke pai, krige beneke beke taka pariata, ebrate skabe, ebraske beta kariata, kapri kapus kariata. May you arise and shine by the Spirit of Grace. May you arise and shine by the Spirit of Grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Instruction number one. Please sit and write if you can. You want to experience advancement in life and destiny. There are requirements. The requirements are summarized in two words. Philippians 3.14. Give it to us please. I press. I press. Not I assume, not I wish. One thing, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching for the things that are before me. Just because they are before me does not mean I will get there. He says, I press. Not we press. I press. There is a force, there is an energy, there is a commitment of responsibility. I press towards the mark. These instructions will help us to press tonight. Are we ready? Number one. This is the first instruction God gave me to bring to us. 
restore genuine spirituality to your life restore genuine spirituality to your life you want to soar you want to be a manifestation of the glory of god restore genuine spirituality to your life restore the god first order back to your life in second chronicles 26 and verse 5 let's hurry up second chronicles 26 and verse 5 talking about uzziah the bible says he sought god in the days of zechariah who had the understanding in the visions of god it says as long as he sought the lord help me god made him to prosper he never said he prospered men do not prosper by themselves there are no self-made men in the kingdom god is the maker not just of the heavens and the earth he makes men he says follow me and i will make you you are made by who you follow he says follow me and i will make you it's not only the heavens and the earth that he makes he's still making men restore genuine spirituality let this be the year that you refuse to be careless with your spiritual life don't play church no god is not a magician god is not a most believers just play a bracatabra with god and expect to suddenly stumble into grace and glory no your life will eventually be a reflection of your spiritual health restore your spiritual life means return back to the place of prayer genuine prayer return back to the place of communion and fellowship with god return back to the place of the study of the word for edification that is the apostolic order that was left to us in acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in the breaking of bread and in fellowship and in prayer hallelujah there is no gift of growth in the Bible. Growth is not a gift. Did you hear what I said? There are many enhancers that bring growth. But growth in the Bible is not a gift. Growth is an intentional engaging of the ministry of prayer, the ministry of the word, communion with the spirit. And then you grow. It says, I commend you, Acts chapter 20, I believe, and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you to God, he says, and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Able to do what? Not just able to give you an information. The word of God is beyond a newspaper. The word of God is beyond a history book. This Bible you see, ladies and gentlemen, is beyond a history book. It is able to build you up then it gives you after you are built up because an heir for as long as he's a child the bible says he differed nothing from a slave even though he be lord of all let this be the year you don't give excuses for prayerlessness create a systemic approach to your prayer life when you are too busy to pray you have signed up for defeat when you are too busy to learn the ways of god the ways of God precede his glory. If you do not know the ways of God, you can never encounter his glory. Say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to pray, to fast, to study, to fellowship with God and with the brethren. There is no superstition to spiritual growth. It is a predefined formula. The health of your prayer life the health of your word study life your personal communion with god are we together yes your corporate fellowship with the brethren coming to church these are the ingredients that equal growth you miss them the same way you do not have a balanced diet and there are consequences one vitamin can go wrong in your body and it can shut down your whole body let this be the year you commit yourself i will be in church I will serve, not just come and warm benches and go back. I will be, I will listen for instructions like you are listening now. Spirituality. Can I tell you this end time is the zone where there are no in-betweens. You are either serious with God 
or you pay the price seriously hallelujah spirituality pays the arsenals of darkness are bringing their finest weapons to see how they can bring the mighty down destroying destinies anyone that carries prophecy they are after you have to fortify yourself not out of fear but these are the survival strategies of the end time you can't afford to just be claiming and shouting and no 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 invest in prayer take time to pray take time to fast take time to study let me speak to co-laborers in the gospel by the privilege of god's grace can i tell you yesterday's grace will not be sufficient for today's assignment no you will need to press you don't just tell somebody be healed and then you is healed because you saw it in the bible no this is one year where there will be a clear separation between those who are serious with god and those who are playing games a clear separation like night and day there are things you cannot fake the glory is one of them you can fake power but not the glory so god is speaking to someone here perhaps you are coming for the first time welcome to david's christian center but the lord is charging you the the overall excelling of your life is dependent on the health of your spiritual growth don't love money more than you love god you will not get both of them anything that takes the place of god god will fight it even if he's the one that gave you did you hear what i said number two let's hurry up let's use the next five minutes or so just to get that is someone learning already so restore genuine spirituality to your life you want to soar you want to advance you want to gain the momentum that gives you an edge number two contend for light superior spiritual illumination this is the year you would deal with ignorance without mercy did you hear what i said deal with ignorance without mercy damage ignorance from your life number one ignorance as far as the ways of god are concerned but number two ignorance of the laws of life and destiny even as touching your endeavor there are two kinds of knowledge you need to pursue number one is the knowledge of god your spiritual knowledge but that is not enough number two is that you must strive for mastery hallelujah nobody becomes a champion by mistake no there are participants by mistake but there are no champions by mistake you never find someone winning the olympic by mistake many believers are ignorant we claim many things we do not have the light component to defend john 1 5 and the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not are we together isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 arise it says shine for not not for your time has come your time can come and you will still remain there ask the man at bethesda every time and every year was his time but because lights did not come for him even though it was his time he remained there it is not your time has come it is your light has come you don't arise because your time has come you don't arise because it's a new year you arise the day your night is over and the night is over with the coming of light and he called the the light day and the darkness he called night that means in god's economy night is not when it is 6 p.m night is any time there is no light are we together now yes you can be 12 midnight physically and in the spirit you are in the day because you are walking in the light fight smallness many believers know something small about prosperity something small about consecration something small about fasting small 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 first corinthians 8 and verse 2 please give it to us first corinthians 8 and verse 2 let's read together ready one to read and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know there is a standard of light 
connected to every result you desire. Let me repeat myself for your hearing. There is a standard of light connected to, for every result you desire. If we look at light in terms of currencies, how many of you know that if you have 10,000, you have money? Am I right on that? Can that buy you a plate of food? Yes, generally. But can that buy you a car? Can that pay your house rent? Can it buy you a house? But if I say all those who have money stand up, you will join them. Is when it comes to do to purchase realities, you will see the deficiency of what you are holding. So many of us are bragging around, I have light, but it does not purchase anything in the spirit. Because there were many lights that were made, but he made two great lights. One to rule the day and the other to rule the night. Then he made the stars also. And even among the stars, he says, one different from another in glory. Let this be the year you contend for light. Damage ignorance. Buy books. Go and settle down with materials. Are we together? Minimize social media and transfer that time to your spirit man. I'm not saying don't enjoy social media, but stop worshiping it and go and settle down and worship God and build your life. Don't pretend results. Get actual results. Why fake what can be real? Are we learning? I'm not preaching. No, these are just instructions and then we'll wrap up. Contend for light. Come to church. And don't come to church with your hands on your pocket and you are just saying, let me hear if there is one or two things I will learn. Those kind of people never rise. Do you know why? There is no intention to receive. You come with your paper, your notebook. If it's your phone, make sure that it does not distract you. What is God saying through my pastor? I tremble at his word. I receive with meekness the engrafted word. And in no time you will see yourself soaring. Champions are champions because of the abundance of light that they have. The Bible calls it marvelous light. Number three. What is the third in prophetic instruction connected to your advancement? This year, you will require strength and courage. Destiny actualization demands strength and courage. Joshua chapter 1, 5 to 7. My time is up. Let's write that very quickly. Joshua 1, 5 to 7. A mandate was about to be given to Joshua now. And he says, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you and I will not forsake you. You will think after such an instruction, you should say, that's it. God has spoken. Next verse. God now said what you would do, but for you, he says, be strong and of good courage. There is bad courage. Courage that is born out of ignorance and pride is bad courage. It will always lead to pain and disappointment. Good courage is the one that is derived from knowledge and stability because wisdom and knowledge are stabilizers of life and destiny. Are we together? Be strong. Many of you will need to dare things this year. Don't be afraid of failure. If you fail while trying, you are more honorable than the one who was afraid of starting. Many times when you try, you will find out that the failure you are afraid of is also afraid of you. Weary failure. Go and start the business. Go and register the company. Take steps of faith. Be courageous. Are we together? Some of you are dealing with issues that probably you've carried over from last year, maybe financial issues. Take the courage to face it. Don't run away from challenges. Obtain grace. Where you need to take responsibility, take responsibility. Where you need to plead for mercy, plead for mercy. Running away from problems has never solved them. Did you hear what I said? Running away from problems, financial problems. There are people who drink their way hoping that the bills will disappear. And they wake up and find out that all they have is bills and a headache. You are not free. Obtain grace and say this money thing, let's face it. I'm not going to be afraid of it again. This issue of the devil destroying my wife, my children, my life. Face everything. Face your fears with courage. Knowing that God stands by you as a mighty terrible one. Number four. 
Is someone getting blessed? Are you ready for number four? Build and invest in destiny-defining relationships. Write that down, please. Build and invest in destiny-defining relationships. I'm giving you prophetic instructions. Build and invest. I want you to write those words. I'm not careless with words. I didn't say go and get relationships. Build and then invest in destiny-defining relationships. There are relationships that are destiny-defining relationships. I need not tell you this is a church that has gained mastery understanding family life and relationships. It's true. Everything in life excels on the strength of relationship. Your relationship with God is what gives you access to his wisdom, his favor, and all the possibilities in the kingdom. The reality of the afterlife is relationship dependent, not achievement dependent. Relationships are that powerful. Hallelujah. I wish I had the time I would have taught you that God prospering men even in this end time. One of the ways that God gives people acceleration is to connect them to those who have arrived or those who are ahead. Did you hear what I said? There are many results that do not come based on personal achievements. They come based on connections. Every time God wants to give men speed, he shifts you from the realm of achievement to the realm of connection. You can be Abraham or Lot. If you are not Abraham, make sure you respect Abraham because your prosperity is tied to him. There is the Lot dimension of wealth and there is the Abraham dimension of wealth. All of them prospered. God called Abraham. Lot chose to connect with wisdom. As foolish as Lot was, he still prospered. Because we do not see him making any personal decisions. His first official decision that he made when he parted from Abraham landed him in Sodom. And the subsequent decisions got him there and stabilized him there. So he was not as wise as his wealth. It was his relationship that was a leverage. Are we together? It takes time to learn certain things that make you truly successful. So when God wants to give you acceleration, he connects you to people who have paid the price. So that while you are learning, you can arrive. It's true. Most people do not know the power of relationships. You need to invest in relationships. Invest in quality, strategic relationships. I'm here in your church today because of relationships. You see that? It's very, very important. You invest in your relationship by praying for the people. You may have heard me say this. The greatest way to invest in a relationship if you do not have value to offer is gratitude. Write it down. Gratitude is an investment that never fails. You are looking for a fail-proof investment? I give you one for this year. Gratitude. Invest in gratitude first before you invest in real estate. Where real estate fails, gratitude will keep it back up. In this kingdom, you have heard me say, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you really matters. Believe me. If everybody hates you, you are in trouble. Don't say it doesn't matter. It really matters. If everybody hates you, you are in trouble. Satan is excelling today because it's not everybody that hates him. I hope you know that. He said, don't be afraid for I have many men in that city. In the multitude of kings, men, not gold, is the king's honor. Every other thing finds its value on earth because it is connected to men. What you call business is not transacting products. It is simply men. Because men are the only ones that give value to whatever be becomes valuable. What you call value is with respect to the desire of men. So if men do not like a typewriter, even though you have the ability to type, it no longer becomes valuable. Not because the skill is useless, but the men who need it are not interested again. Do not ignore men. Many believers hate men and they say, all I have is true. When you are saying all you need is Jesus, you are right. But in the cosmos, the earth has he given to the sons of men. There are people you need to swallow your pride and go and say sorry to this year. If not, you will suffer as if God did not prophesy to you. 
I hope you know that there are people who are not castable. You cannot bind and cast them. They are gatekeepers, even if they are Cyruses. <laughs> when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes, there are some enemies you can't cast away. God will have to make them like you. How do you cast Pharaoh from his throne to become the prime minister? No. Pharaoh must like you, Joseph, to bring you to the throne. Esther, how do you cast away Ahasuerus? By prayer and fasting? No. The prayer and fasting is to make Ahasuerus like you. Is someone learning now? Yes. Invest in strategic relationships. Someone who pays your rent, you forget his birthday and say, I forgot. You know the meaning of that? Because many believers, pastor, are careless. Everybody is in their outer court. It doesn't matter who. No. Compartmentalize your life. There are people who represent destiny-defining relevance to you. Don't generalize them. Love everybody, but don't be ashamed of prioritizing people, especially because of the, the track record of the investments they've made in your life. An example of such is your pastor. Bless him, pray for him, invest in his life, sow into his life. It's true. Don't mind people, don't allow anybody to deceive you and keep you poor and you fail in life and cry as if Jesus did not die for you. These are the principles. They work if you follow them. Are we together? Yes. Appreciate your spouse. Appreciate your children. Appreciate those around you. Your driver is driving you every day and you are insulting him. One day you will choose to die, both him and you. I'm just joking. The man who is driving you, you are not appreciating. The one cooking your meal. Your security man, you are not These are very strategic people. Go back quickly and go and appreciate them. Hallelujah. <laughs> relationships. David Christian Center, build relationships. Let me give you one assignment and then I wrap up. Can you list two people in your life today that if you are in trouble, you can call them and say, come to my aid and you can guarantee that they will stand up and come. Don't answer me. Just think. Because many of you are lying. That I'm not talking, if, let's say you are in a financial situation, you can call them and if they have the means, they will not sleep. They say, you are too valuable to ignore your pain. If you don't have such people in your life, you are sitting on a time bomb. Use this year and Create that bridge quickly. Some of you come to church, they say, turn to your neighbor right and left, say, God bless you. Perhaps that person is your destiny helper. We misbehave in church and close certain doors and not know why we suffer for nothing. Are we learning? The church is where you are able to meet certain people that you never would have been able to meet naturally. Take advantage, respect people. very important I value relationships my life today has enjoyed the leverage of relationships believe me you know you are valuable because you don't have to remind people of things like your birthday your anniversary if you have to keep reminding people it's a sign that you are not valuable enough that means the vec your absence did not create any vacuum it means your presence is not useful Are we learning? You don't need to be kind to everybody. You will suffer for nothing. Human beings are selfish people. Select destiny defining. Re I'm saying this because church is a funny place. People hear all kinds of things and go and put themselves in trouble. There are destiny defining people. You cannot put an enemy and a friend and give them the same treatment. No. Know the difference between an ally and a foe. Know the difference between an enemy and a friend. The person who helps you to know the Lord is truly your friend. The person who is there for you, loving you in spite of all they know about you is a true friend. Don't throw them away and surround yourself with psychophants who will say, become king over us today and say, crucify him tomorrow. Many of you right now, you are bleeding from pains that have come from foolish decisions. Use this year to rewrite strategic friendships. Are we learning? Can I give you one more? 
Thank you, Jesus. Number four. Number five. You want to experience advancement in life and destiny, you must be ready to obey. Obedience. This is the final instruction I'll give you and then we'll be done. Obedience. Nothing in the kingdom will ever substitute for obedience. Not even prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting helps you to receive the prophetic word that you obey to make happen. Many people want to substitute obedience with all kinds of spiritual activities. No, to obey is better than sacrifice. Any kind of sacrifice. Hallelujah. Obedience to the word of God, the principles of the kingdom, and prophetic instructions. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. He didn't say, Peter, come. He said, come. The one who obeyed was the one who saw his power. Any one of them had the opportunity to obey. Nobody's name was called. If it be thou, bid me come. Come forward. That's what God is telling you. Come. Let January, let 2024 be an excelling year. Come. But you will have to obey. To obey means that you have to be willing to take steps you've not taken before because God has spoken. Are we together? I believe God with all my heart. Everything he's told me, everything he's spoken, I know he will bring it to pass, but it is at the instance of your obedience. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that I command you this day. He says that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Just because God is mighty does not mean you will see his might in your life. Everything in the kingdom revolves at the instance of obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. No matter what you call faith, if it does not translate to obedience, it is not Bible faith. Obedience. Be ready to listen for instructions. Be ready to obey the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, he says, but by every word. Obey the financial principles that God has put in scripture. Obey the principles that God has put in scripture as far as your spiritual health is concerned. Obey all the principles that God has put. For instance, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That means this year should not be a year of sadness and gloominess. You must make up your mind that joy will well up from my spirit. It doesn't matter what I hear. Though the fig tree will not blossom, nor olive be on the vine. It says, yet I will rejoice. Because it is with joy that you draw from out of the wells of salvation. Make up your mind. No frowning in my face. I don't care what happens in office, favorable or otherwise. And Satan will position people to spoil your mind after such a powerful conference. You resume on Monday and someone says, why are you looking sick? Are you okay? And you almost want to slap the person. Then you remember my sermon. Rejoice in the Lord. You raise a song that only you know because you are forcing yourself to be joyful. And in the name of Jesus, while you are being joyful, something just happens. Joy. Joy. Live by the principles of the word. That is your immunity against the darkness. That is your immunity against the times. There is no superstition that will bring you any immunity. Your immunity resides within the word of God. Do you believe this? Can we rise up now and I speak over your life just one last time and then we're done. You have a great year. Please stand everybody. This is the final blessing and then we're done. Let me have your attention everyone please. Those who fly an airplane are those who first enter the airplane. Those who serve around the airport don't necessarily fly. The only person who flies, being around an airport, there are those who help to manage the whole process before the flight takes off, and yet they have never entered a plane to the sky. Proximity to an aircraft does not equal flight. Mm -mm. Before you get into any airplane, they check something, your 
card or whatever, whether it's in e form or whatever it is. And if for any reason you are trying to smuggle yourself inside that plane, they gently drag you out and tell you no, your name is not on the register. Is that true? Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. This is an opportunity for someone to start this year properly. My Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous man enters into it and he is saved. There is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. Church does not save. Church creates the platform for your salvation. A sermon does not save. A sermon prepares your heart to receive that which truly brings salvation. It is only placing your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Confessing and declaring his lordship over your life consciously. This is what brings salvation. There are so many people, I saw so many people outside and so many people within this auditorium. Perhaps you've been coming for the several conferences year after year and wondering why your life has remained the same. Jesus Christ has given you one opportunity in this conference to make it right with him. I'm going to make two calls in one. Thank you for just squeezing a few minutes for me. And I want to call two groups of people in one call. Number one, those who are saying, Apostle Wiles, I heard you speaking. You said I should remember not the former things. You do not know how my life has been. I've lived my life without Jesus. I entered this year watching people rejoicing across crossover services. But I know for me that Jesus was not in my heart and he's still not in my heart. But I want to make him Lord of my life. It doesn't matter how yesterday has been. He's able to give you a new beginning. And then number two, for those who are saying, Apostle, I don't even want to begin to talk about last year and my Christian experience before now. It's been a mess that I'm not proud of. Can Jesus receive me and can we start afresh? This is why he gives us the gift of today. Today is the only way to correct yesterday. I want to make these calls. I'm going to count one to five. And let me plead that as many as we can have in front here, after I count five, maybe the protocol just helped to make sure that they... When I count one to five, I want you to run and come and stand here. Once the front is full, you have to stand wherever you are. I want to lead you to Jesus Christ. I don't want you to sit down calculating. We're not playing games. You know that you are not, your ways are not right with Jesus. I count one to five as I begin to count, run and come and stand here. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Two. Leave your seat. Win that war right now. Come and stand before Jesus. Two. Calvary, but come. Run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. That blood that was shed in Calvary is calling you. Don't be ashamed. Come. 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 Can you create space for them here? Three. I count five and then I begin to pray. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm afraid of my friend. Leave them alone and come to Jesus. I want to come, but I'm not sure. Come. You can have the assurance of salvation. Hallelujah. Four. Hold on, please, just a moment. We're broadcasting this online. And I have to give someone an opportunity online. Perhaps there's someone you're watching here at David's Christian Center from America, Europe, Canada. You're connecting from across the globe. Distance is no barrier. When it has to do with the business of Jesus, it is every man's business. Are we together now? So to family and friends and all those who are connecting across the globe, here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. You can connect with us. And as I lead this, my precious people in prayer, I want you to join in this prayer and ensure 
that you mean every word that you say. Let's honor these ones for responding to this call. Glorious harvest. Hallelujah. Can I tell you the truth? Anybody who does not rejoice at souls being saved is not a child of God. It's impossible to truly have the Spirit of God. This is the zenith of what Jesus died for. Promotion without salvation will still cost you pain that you cannot explain. Any kind of advancement where Jesus is not in your boat, or in this case, your flight. There were two men that entered the boats of men. One destroyed them, the other preserved them. Jonah entered the boat of people, and even though he was a prophet, they lost everything and they were about to die. They threw him out of the boat to survive. Jesus was in the boat of some other people, and even though he was sleeping, he was the reason they did not die. Everyone is given an opportunity to choose who enters your boat. You can't do anything necessarily about the storm, but just verify that it is not Jonah that is in your boat. Jonah can mean anything, including good things. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please let me have your attention. On behalf of Pastor Kingsley, I want to appreciate you for responding to this noble call. I want to lead you to make Jesus Lord of your life. For some of you, you are rededicating your life. And I'm very proud of you for making this bold decision. This is unto Jesus and in honor of your destiny. I salute you for the courage to have stepped out. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand, if you will, high above your head as a sign of surrender. And I want you to say this from your, the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. My little children, when it's time to say the prayer, you join us to say the prayer also. Jesus said, let the little children come. Hallelujah. So someone will guide our children so that they make this decision. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep those hands. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Your word declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. I decree and declare over these precious ones based on the authority of your word that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over their lives. And in the name of Jesus, the grace to live a victorious Christian life, I impart it over your life. In the name of Jesus, you are planted in the house of God and you flourish in the courts of our God. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name, we pray. All right, just a quick instruction. All of you who are in front, as we clap for you, I want you to follow a gentle. Hallelujah. Let me just speak over your life. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. I stand in partnership with the grace over God's servant and I decree and declare David's Christian Center and all who have come for this conference in the name that is above all names. The grace required for your ascendance this year may it be released upon you. In the name of Jesus, every mountain 
that stands before you and the next level of your life and destiny in the name of jesus we speak to that mountain that it be lifted and thrown into the sea i declare your children blessed i declare your spouse blessed i declare the works of your hands blessed i declare your job blessed your business is blessed your ministry is blessed your endeavors blessed no one shouting amen would die before their time in the name of jesus christ and i speak over you when men say there is a casting down for you even this year let it be that there is a lifting up indeed i declare mount up with wings as eagles beyond the challenges and the vicissitudes of life may god pick you on a flight in the spirit in the name of jesus christ and i join my faith with every man of god that has stood here ministering to you and the others who will be coming in subsequent days i decree and declare every prophetic word that has come from this altar the grace to bring performance to it let it be released to your life in the mighty name of jesus thank you very much and may god bless you